All our lives, we've been told to go to school, get good grades, get a good job, and you'll be set. How's that working out for you? I'm Tavana Denise, physical therapist turned life and business coach, and I'm on a mission to help you create a life you love and a business on your terms. If you want more time, more freedom, more flexibility, I can help you create it. Welcome to Breaking Protocol, the show for women in healthcare who want more. episodes. Can you believe it? I have been here talking to you recording 10 episodes of the Breaking Protocol podcast. And for some reason, my brain tells me that I should be really excited that this is a momentous occasion. But when it was time for me to record this podcast, I just felt super resistant. I really did not feel excited about it. I didn't want to record it. And I decided to get some coaching on it because I know that whenever we take action or we don't take action, it's because of something that we're thinking. And so I wanted to share my own challenges with resistance and how I got through it, how I got past it using my thoughts, not changing the circumstance, because here I am. I didn't chuck this and say, well, I'm not supposed to be doing a podcast, so I'm not doing it. But I changed the way I thought about it. And so here we are recording yet another podcast with you, Breaking Protocol, and I made a commitment to myself that I was going to do it. And I, maybe just like you, where I'm used to powering through stuff, I'm used to pushing down my feelings, pushing down the frustration, the overwhelm, what have you, and just doing it. But I'm trying to make some changes in that part of my life. So I said, okay, let me get some coaching around this. And it was interesting. We discovered together that I was having a thought they're doing it right and I'm doing it wrong. Because as I was recording these podcasts for you, instead of it feeling like a conversation, which was originally what I had intended, which is super easy when I'm doing interviews, by the way, but instead of it feeling like a conversation, it was starting to feel like I was at Toastmasters every week. Have you ever done Toastmasters? If you haven't, you've got to try it. Well, maybe you don't have to try it, but I thought, If I wanted to become a better speaker, I thought it'd be a good idea to go to Toastmasters because that's what they do. They make better speakers. So I went and every week you can sign up to do a speech. They are going to critique it. They're going to talk about your points. And I never got any points off, if you will, for the passion of delivery or hand movements or saying, uh, too much. That wasn't what they got me on. It was always the structure. And so as I'm talking to you now, I think that's also part of what my hiccup was. But anyways, I had decided in my mind that if my podcast didn't sound structured, if it didn't have the three bullet points, if it wasn't like one of my mentors, Brooke Castillo's podcast or Amy Porterfield's or Stacey Bayman's, where they seem to have a very structured podcast, it has about the same minutes each time. Like it's very on point, (laughs) then I was doing it wrong. And of course I didn't want to do it wrong. So it made it very challenging for me to get through my work where I love the concept of breaking protocol, which is kind of funny because the whole idea of breaking protocol is not following the rules. And then here I was worried and resistant about not doing it quote right as if there are some rules. So If you've been following me for a while, you know that the thought model tells us there's a circumstance. And in this case, it's the podcast, recording the podcast. That's completely neutral. No thoughts about it. There's nothing good or bad about recording a podcast. But then my thoughts about recording the podcast were, they're doing it right, I'm doing it wrong. And when I thought that, I felt resistant to recording it. And so the action that I would take is actually not record, which I'm supposed to be recording on Wednesdays. And then the result is I never really get to figure out what's the right way for me. And so we uncovered that as my unintentional. It was just running in the background that I wasn't aware of. 
And then the intentional model that the coach asked me, well, what do you want to think about your podcast? And I want it to be fun and not rigid. And when I chose that thought, then about the same thing, recording the podcast, when I chose that thought, it actually felt aspirational. And when I felt aspirational, I came up with these great ideas to just to put the different topics into a hat and just pull them out. Because I know for a fact that if you talk to me, I can run my mouth. I love talking to people. I love learning. I know a lot of things about a lot of things and not just a little bit about a lot of things. So if you give me a subject, if you ask me a question, I can go pretty deep on those questions, especially as it relates to business as a coach. So I decided that we're gonna start doing a segment called Ask Tavana, or maybe it's gonna be called Tavana's Thoughts and Tips. I don't know yet, but the reason why I wanted to talk to you today about doing business the quote right way is because I think we're alike in that way, in that as much as I talk about breaking protocol, as much as I talk about being unapologetically me and freedom and doing what we want, we have a lot of thoughts and beliefs that we have to unpack, that we have learned to believe over the years. And so this is just one of them, that there is a quote, right way to do business. And I want to challenge that thought right now, because if that were the truth, then we wouldn't have McDonald's and various franchises. We wouldn't have uh, Hewlett Packard and why did I come up with Hewlett Packard? Who knows? But Hewlett Packard and big corporations, we wouldn't have the solo business owner. Like if there was a quote, right way to do business, we wouldn't have all of those things. So all of that to say, If you have been really resisting doing something in your business, in this, in my case, podcast, maybe it's starting the business altogether, then consider before you try changing things. So I had the option very much to say, okay, well, maybe podcasts are not my thing. I shouldn't do them. No. If you ever get excited about doing something in the beginning and you start doing it, expect that sometimes it's going to be challenging right? But if you were excited in the beginning, try not to let the resistance that you meet and all of the stuff that you tell yourself, this is not fun. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. I'm no good at this. I'm not doing it the right way. Try not to let that get in the way. It makes me think about that book that I read one time called The War of Art. The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Not to be confused with The Art of War right? Where he talks very much about the resistance that artists and creators, business owners are creators and artists in their own way that we face in putting our stuff out into the world. So your litmus test is one to think about if you were excited and doing it in the beginning and it was a great idea in the beginning, then that is usually, and it scares you a little bit, right? That is usually a good idea, a good sign for you to keep going. And once you get in it to stay committed to the excitement that you had in the beginning and allow yourself to make mistakes, allow yourself to get feedback, to flow with it. The other thing that I would recommend doing is when you find yourself butting up against that resistance is to ask yourself, What am I thinking about right now that's causing the resistance? We want to keep changing our circumstances to feel better. And we know that that's not how that works. Just in my example alone, you can see how I was able to change what I was thinking about the circumstance to feel better. So when you can see what you are thinking and notice how it's making you feel, and you can kind of question those thoughts and change those thoughts then from that place, you can create some inspired action. Maybe like putting your topics in a hat and just pulling one out and going from the cuff, or maybe asking people to ask questions ahead of time so that you can answer off the top of your head like you would in real life. So if we try to change the action without addressing the thought, we find ourselves chasing circumstances. Another way to say that you might've heard shiny object syndrome, where 
oh, maybe it's not podcast. Maybe it's blogging. Maybe it's not blogging. Maybe it's Facebook groups. Maybe it's not Facebook groups. Maybe it's Facebook ads. And so how do you ever get good at anything? How do you ever get traction with anything if you keep chasing circumstances? So if you have any questions that you want me to cover, that you want to ask me or any topics that you want me to cover on the podcast, I'm here for it. I love it. I love going off the cuff. And so I get to decide what's the right way in my business. And guess what? Now you get to help me. So if you have a question for me, hopefully you're in the Thrive Network. You're always welcome to ask questions there. Or you can send me an email to thrive at tavonadenise.com. Oh, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and share. Until next time, friend. Thank you.